Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tippet for Friday, August 21st, 2015. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. But here's the Atlantic and Hurricane Danny continuing to move west-northwest in the central Atlantic. Has not yet encountered wind shear. That is going to be occurring tonight. And so for the last 12 hours or so has strengthened. And a recon plane went in there this afternoon and found a Category 3 major hurricane. Pressures under 970 millibars at one point and winds to 111 knots or about 125 miles per hour. So the NHC has upgraded this to a Category 3. And uh, this is of little consequence, really, to the Lesser Antilles at this point, because really, no matter how strong Danny got today, its tiny size that we talked about yesterday makes it especially susceptible to the wind shear and dry air that are about to affect it. If we look at the floater here, you can see this band of cirrus off to the west. Note it moving out of the southwest, and so you can imagine what the upper flow looks like coming into the hurricane beginning pretty soon during the next several hours i expect overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning we will see wind shear begin to affect danny in a big way you can already see some of the results of that with most of the outflow confined to the northeastern quadrant and there's been some evaporation of the spiral bands on the western side of danny as wind shear has now forced some of this dry air into the western semicircle of the hurricane and this is going to continue you see the eye having some trouble now beginning to get covered up and cloud filled this is probably partially due to shear and possibly due to a miniature eye wall replacement cycle as there was a secondary band that may have been trying to form a secondary eye wall when the recon plane sent radar data back from the storm it's hard to say which but either way the inner core organization is becoming less impressive today and uh, the storm may have already peaked in intensity and may already be starting the weakening process so again the expected forecast is that this will stay a hurricane for a day or so but then will fall off to tropical storm intensity as it interacts with the northern Antilles and possibly Puerto Rico in the longer range and it is possible that Danny manages to slip just to the north of the islands here, uh, the tracks have been too far south thus far, and the correction has consistently been a nudge toward the north. And Danny, getting a little stronger today, has moved a little bit more poleward than expected. So it may be that it slips north of these islands, but hopefully some beneficial rains will still fall. Usually interaction with an upper-level trough, although it shears and weakens the system, it also usually keeps thunderstorms going in some way, and so chances are there will be some beneficial rains in this area of the Caribbean, and uh, goodness knows they definitely need it. Now the only real wild card for Danny is if it does slip just north of the islands here, it may be able to re-strengthen in this area of the southwestern Atlantic where the waters get a lot warmer, the atmosphere a lot more unstable, and it gets away from that sheer and dry air. Right now only one model, the GFDL, shows this solution, but if it can avoid Hispaniola, which is the great hurricane killer, if it moves over this it'll be gone for sure. But if the remnants or the weak tropical storm or whatever this is when it gets toward the longitude of Puerto Rico here, whatever it is, if it's robust enough when it gets into this area, we may have to watch for regeneration. But right now that's not in the forecast. Only one model shows that, but it is something to keep in the back of your mind if you're in the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos in here in case this thing slips just to the north. Now over in the Pacific, we are still watching what is now Tropical Storm Kiko. This is Tropical Depression 3 that we talked about yesterday. A very large circulation, but if we zoom in on it here, uh, we see that it's still elongated like we talked about yesterday, and we mentioned this is going to take a while to organize, and indeed, uh, this is still a very large lumbering uh, circulation that is getting sheared big time out of the east we might be able to see on the bigger loop here some of these cirrus clouds moving out of the southeast that's pushing most of this convection and heavy thunderstorm activity onto the west side of the circulation and uh, this is going to continue for about the next 12 to 24 hours but this has several days with which to move northwest and then curve slowly to the north and uh, this seems likely in a more favorable environment in a day or two to have a good shot at becoming a hurricane on its way poleward. Now, currently, a lot of models disagree on exactly where this will turn north. Will it be north of Hawaii and then curve back to the west, or will it be a sharper turn close to Hawaii or even over the Hawaiian Islands here? That is currently the great forecast challenge. And right now, the Central Pacific Hurricane Center has a track through day five that implies a miss, but 
the Kauai here well within the cone of uncertainty at this point. Now I'm going to show you why the Hawaiian Islands should still keep an eye on this. And uh, this is the GFS ensemble mean 500 millibar uh, heights in black contours and winds in barbs here. This is about 18,000 feet up. This is roughly the steering layer if this becomes a hurricane. And uh, you see this subtropical ridge here over Hawaii. Here's what would be Kiko. And notice there's a weakness in the ridge just to the west of Hawaii. Now what this usually means is if this is a hurricane, this usually goes for the path of least resistance and moves to the north and splits this ridge in half and the ridge will erode. Now there's a lot of troughiness in a zonal sense to the north of Hawaii and if you go out to day four now you see that the ridge has really weakened there's not much of a ridge left and all of this broad troughiness to the north of Hawaii is inducing a strong east to east northeasterly flow or really it's a west to west southwesterly flow toward the east northeast and Kiko here there's two solutions the low level flow is toward the northwest so if this fails to become a hurricane it may drift to the northwest and then re-strengthen in the Central Pacific, which is what the European model shows, missing Hawaii by a wide margin. But if this, this is able to strengthen into a hurricane, then it's likely to take this flow in the mid-atmosphere and follow it toward the east-northeast, and we would be dealing with a very sharp recurve that could potentially take it over the Hawaiian Islands. And uh, this is still very much on the table, and folks should be keeping an eye on this system and what the Central Pacific Hurricane Center has to say about it as time goes on. This uh, end of the forecast here, day five, still hasn't even reached the latitude of Kauai here. So this is a uh, several days out and lots can still change, but the pattern would support a very, very sharp recurve that could impact the Hawaiian Islands if this is a strong enough system to take that path. And a few models do show it becoming a powerful hurricane south of Hawaii. So this will be worth keeping an eye on as the next few days go by. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.